Hey there, in this video I'm going to go over the first implementation of the new Text Mesh Pro text container component. Now this component is similar in operation to the new Rec Transform that will become available with Unity 4.6. So this is, it isn't meant to be a replacement, but it's more something that uh, users of previous versions of Unity will be able to use. Um, as you know, I'm still planning on having an implementation of Text Mesh Pro that works with Direct Transform. So this is sort of an alternative-ish right now and we'll see as we move forward how it goes. But I made sure that in its design and implementation as far as how it hooks up to Text Mesh Pro that I can easily go back to Direct Transform and vice versa. So having said that, let's focus on this component. Now this video is not gonna be glamorous, it's just uh, me showing um, this implementation. Um, in the past, when I create these videos, uh, obviously I'm doing it to get your feedback, but most of the time I run into issues and bugs and whatever, so it's kind of a good thing for me to make those as it allows me to uncover stuff. So anyway, so here's the component. Um, I basically have an empty game object, which I'm going to delete. And I'm going to add the component, so just so you see how it gets added. Um, so add component, I put it in layout and text container, and here it is. So by default, when it's on its own, uh, it gets, uh, the anchor position gets set to middle, it sets a width and a height, um, and basically you have a margin of 1111. Now, what is this thing kind of? I guess I skipped over that part. Well, as you know, Unity, um, you know, all of your objects have a transform, and this transform basically is a point in space. It's the origin of your object. Now, when you're dealing with text, um, having an origin isn't, I mean, it's kind of cool, but it doesn't allow you to handle things like, you know, when you're trying to center the object or align it to left and right, because it's just a point. So in terms of text, it makes more sense to have a container, uh, as we can see here, that has width and height, and then within this container, we can position our text and do stuff with it. So the tweak that I made is instead of this being just a container like the Rec Transform, this one has this yellow line in here, which is sort of your margin. So similar to a Word document where the white lines represents your page, the yellow line represents your margin or where the text actually lives and how the text, you know, if I move the margin, that would affect the position of our text itself. Now this margin, uh, when it comes to masking, that's another reason why I threw in the margins, is um, when masking is enabled, um, or when clipping occurs, or one or the other, um, you'll be able to pick the behavior. So in terms of masking or clipping, well, if you had like a soft mask, there's a question of, well, where does the soft mask begin and where does it end? Okay, so if the text was to live right on the line here, the issue with this is if you had a soft mask, then the text would actually expand outside of the equivalent of your page, which would be kind of weird. So when you throw in a margin, so as the text would go outside the margin, then it would begin to fade or get cut and so on and so forth. But by the time it hits the boundary of the container, then it's fully faded. So it, it just gives you more control. Uh, hopefully that made sense. So anyway, so moving on. Um, in terms of the control over this thing, um, so the anchor obviously controls where this uh, origin point is or the pivot. So right now this is still zero, zero, and now it's drawn this way. Now it's the middle point, and then it's the bottom right, so you get you know what that does. Okay, moving on. In terms of the control of the width and the height, you can obviously control it here, but you can also grab these handles here and move it around. So here I'm resizing it on the right side, left side, corner, and so on and so forth. Let me hit undo a couple times to bring it back to the normal position. Now if I hold shift down, then here as you, I'm not holding shift right now, but as you can see the, the transform stays in the middle and we're resizing you know, the right side or the left side. But if I hold shift down, then I'm resizing both sides or top and bottom, okay? Let's go back to the default size. Um, in terms of the margin, well, I already showed that. You can move those around. It's pretty straightforward. 
um, and that's what it is. So in this case, it's just a text container with nothing attached to it. Now, when you create a new text mesh pro object, that container will be attached automatically. Uh, so now let's get rid of this object. Let's create a new object and take a look at some behaviors. Uh, and that's the part where I'm going to need some feedback. So let me add a script. Um, you didn't see me fetch it, but it's just a simple script. Let me go to Visual Studio so you can see what it looks like. So it's a simple script. Uh, I define a string here uh, as a constant. We're going to, in a way, create a new text mesh pro object. Then we're going to get a reference to this text container that will be added to the text mesh pro component automatically. And then, actually, let me comment this out. And then in start, we will do nothing. So by default, when we do nothing, so here we can see that the text mesh pro object was created, the text container was added. Uh, since we didn't specify any text, any width, any height, by default, it basically picks the anchor middle, width of 30, height of 20, margin 11111, and that's it. Um, and that's what we get. Now let's turn this off, let's go back, and let's start making tweaks. So if I specify a text in the text mesh pro object, then the behavior is different. Basically at this point, still same pattern. We created the text mesh pro object, we added the component the container, but now since we have text, my assumption is well, if you're gonna have text, you probably want the container to match the size of the text, which it does here. So in the case of this uh, text or, or string, it basically is 44.9 whatever width and 5.5 high. Now at this point, I can obviously uh, resize this and move it around. Uh, and since I haven't told it to control the text, it doesn't really control it other than the text is anchored over here. Um, so if we look here, actually, let me demo that real quick and make it wider. Um, so the advantage of having this text container is in the current version of Text Mesh Pro that all of you guys have, um, there's this yellow line that represents the line length. But the line length um, determines where word wrapping is and it has no bearing on centering or any of this stuff. Now with the new text container, that's all about the change. So now if I choose left justification, we're left justified. If I pick center, we're now centered between the two margins. And right there, that's a different behavior from the current version of Text Mesh Pro. If I pick right, then we'll right align like we are here. And then with these gadgets here, I can control it, align to the top, align middle, align bottom, okay? And since I only have a partial line of text showing justification or justified text flush on both sides, you know, doesn't make sense because we don't have enough text. And I'll, I'll, I can show that later on. So anyway, so in terms of the margins, again, as I said, the margins do control where the text is. So if I drag the margin around and drag it here, it obviously affects our text itself. And if I turn on word wrapping, for example, let me move this back here and here. Now if I shrink the area, then we get the word wrapping as we would expect, okay? And same thing if I was to use center justification, you know, again, you can see that the text lives within the margin. Now, uh, centered and expanding the margin looks, you know, it kind of behaves in an interesting way as, you know, it shrinks, but it still remains centered. Okay, let's see, next behavior. So let me flush this out, go back to the script. So now we just created the object and added a text, uh, uh, provided some content for Text Mesh Pro. Now what happens if we specify a width? So if I hit play, now we can see that unlike the previous example, now our container basically has the width that we specified, which is 100, but the height, since we never specified any height, it basically fits it to the height of the text, okay? Next, I guess 100 was a, a little bit much for the amount of text we've got. Next is if I specify height, then as you would expect, 
The object is created with the width and the height that we specified, and the text is contained inside of it. Okay, all good so far. Uh, next, let's start looking at new bells and whistles. Uh, and to demonstrate those, let me go back and start here. Um, so another behavior that's going to be possible is uh, this thing called uh, auto sizing. So with auto sizing, if I click auto, um, now the behavior is going to change. So the text, um, when we specify auto sizing, we can specify a minimum uh, point size and a maximum point size. Um, and let me step back one second here. Um, until you turn on auto sizing, if you specify a font size of 36 points, then your text will be 36 points. But if you turn on auto, then you're basically telling TextMesh Pro to override the font size because you're trying to tell it to fit the size of the text to the container. So it's sort of the reverse behavior. We're either fitting the, uh, we're either fitting the container to the original point size in the text or we're basically driving the point size with the size of the container. So here, if we take a look at this, we're basically saying auto minimum is 18. So if I was to shrink the area of where the text lives, it's going to shrink up to 18 points. And at 18 points, then the text just stops shrinking because we told it that's the maximum or minimum. And in this case, this is when clipping would occur. This is when ellipses would show up, which is the three dots to indicate that we have text that is not fitting. Or this is when masking would show up. Okay, now the opposite is also true in terms of if I expand beyond this thing, the text will grow up to 78, uh, 72 points, which is what we specified. In terms of the min and the max, by default, if your default point size is 36, um, well, that didn't do anything since it's on auto, but if the default is 36, I just decided you know, the minimum is half of the default size and the max is twice what it is. But as a user, you can specify, you know, I want the minimum to be 24. And now if I go to auto and shrink it, it will stop at 24. Okay. Now the shrinking of the text works both ways, which is if I go here and shrink it vertically, now it will shrink again back to 24 and then stop at this point. Okay. So that's the auto sizing. Now auto sizing also works with word wrapping. Um, then it gets a little bit more funky because now it's wrapping. And then when it gets to a point where it can't wrap like the word example, then it begins to shrink. Okay. Um, in terms of the movement right there, that's a behavior that I need to fix because uh, I don't want the text to be moving in the fashion that it is right now. I'd like it to stay stationary and then not move around. Okay. Let's see what else I can show. Um, I'm pretty sure I've gone over most of the options and we're at 13 minutes right now. So let me just get rid of this, hit stop, uh, and actually add a TextMesh Pro object. As you can see, it was already created with uh, this component. Um, and basically, same thing. Enable auto sizing, and we can see that it does exactly as we expect. If I add more text, um, and right now we don't have word wrapping on, which is why it's shrinking. Uh, some oops, not texting, but testing. Okay, let's turn on word wrapping. And since we still have auto on, I guess word wrapping off, it fits everything on one single line. Um, and basically it is using, let me go here. As you can see, it's using the auto sizing. It's gonna increase up to 72. And 64, I guess the text is getting pretty small for the video. Um, now enable word wrapping. And now it fits everything, and obviously it fits easily at 72 in there. So now if I shrink it, you get the idea. So let's see more behaviors that I should show. Um, I was 
a little bit premature in getting rid of my object. Let me go back to my little script here. Go back to Visual Studio. Uh, so we covered that if there is no text specified, no width and no height, we get the default stuff. If there is a text specified, it fits the container to the size of the text. If you specify width and height, it will use those because the presumption is you bother to specify them, therefore we should use them. Now if you start with a label and you choose auto sizing, um, obviously since there's no width and no height specified, we'll still get the same 36 point that we expect normally. However, if we go here and specify a width of like 60, but we set auto sizing on, then obviously the text in this case is eh, not much bigger. Um, it's 36.25 versus 36 um, only because it's restricted in terms of the vertical space. Um, let's go back and try to change that a little bit. 80 maybe. Let's see what we get out of that. And we still get the same thing. I guess I need to expand the height in order for it to do that because it's basically trying to fit as much as it can um, in this height. So anyway, so that kind of wraps it for the video. Uh, hopefully it made sense to you all. Uh, if you have any comments or feedback, me, I'm looking for feedback on this. Um, so just uh, feel free to post and uh, let me know. Thanks for watching.